Hey, I'm Kathleen Gamer. Welcome back to PCM21. It's career mode. We're on episode 53, and we are getting into the final stages of the season. It's now October, and this is the Giro del Emilia. So we're in Italy for this one, and it's a punchy finish, and we are already beginning the final climb. However, this is a climb that we're going to be hitting five times. This is the first of those five times. You can see we're trying to ease in on this first one at a 79. Uh, Luke Shees, this is hurting him a little bit too much. We're going to have to push a little harder than this to avoid getting dropped as it was a little unexpected that the first climb even uh, would be this challenging. Okay, we do see a little split here. Uh, Igashin also struggling. I couldn't kind of find him as we were going through. This, this group will make contact, pretty sure, here in a moment. Should make contact back with the main group anyway. And then we have three guys at the front. Martin Guerrero, who is riding solo today. He's not a protected rider. He's not punchy. Uh, this is a bigger climb than what I thought it was going to be, though. So uh, we'll see if we need to change tactics. There are three riders off the front. Alaphilippe, Evenepoel, Chicone. That we'll need to watch out for as we go to begin climb number two. And I think already we're in kind of a danger zone. This group falling back. This group is very much falling back. So if we want them to still contend, contribute, help somehow, we've got to set them up. And it looks like Luke Shees with that plus four is actually stronger than Igashin. Uh, Roman is probably, yeah, we'll go Roman first. Roman needs to lead these four guys back into contention. Four riders out of 31 is worth it to try to get them back up there, but Roman not making progress at the moment. It's okay if we use up a little bit of red bar because they will recover this. You can see Filippo Ghana, Bookman going backwards. Mullabron already getting dropped. Mullabron out of energy. Martin Guerrero needs to push a little bit harder. Berlikov hanging on just fine. Okay. Oh, Mullabron blocks off Roman, loses four bike lengths. Jeez, our own teammate. Our own teammate cost us contact with that group up ahead. We'd at least be with the six there in between. Berlikov, Martin Guerrero still in what is considered a chase group. And Roman, out of red bar, but does have yellow bar. Needs to try to continue leading this chase. We did leave quite a few guys behind. So now it's just nine. So now we're not looking at bringing back 35 riders or something along those lines. There's that recovery of red bar as I expected. Okay, Ramon pushing hard to try to regain contact. I'd really like to have six to try to chase down the front, which is actually 18 riders now. There, back in contact. Ramon into the group, and we're gonna keep pushing with Ramon, trying to make our way up through the group faster. Otherwise, we're going to see things happen yet again. Okay, Ramon, out of energy. Catch it just in time. Isakov's got to take over. Go uh, 94. 94 is not a good rate for him because he's a climber. Okay, we need to make our way a little slower. This is now a group of 90. kilometers to the finish line with work to do behind, very much with work to do roman is dropped quite a few guys are dropped actually a third of the group more than a third of the group has been dropped isakov oh my, that's a spectacular makes ball. it through so let's get our two leaders now and finally we are getting ourselves in position for what's to come which is two, two more circuits of this hill. Berlakov, for some Gino reason, Ciccone. has decided he doesn't like his position. The riders are entering the last 10 kilometers of the stage. Igushin needs to gel up. Isikov has recovered slightly and will immediately begin his push. To turn things over to Igashin. 
And we've got a chase group, a group of five that we are chasing here. Umba, Vandenberg, Chicone, Palace. So you see two strong riders. And we've made it through that group now. Continuing our chase towards others. Venipole, Gonzalez. Did we leave it too late? These other guys. Okay, it's just a group of 12. We left behind the main group. That is very important. As we uh, set ourselves up for the final run. Luke Shees is going to have to take over now. As Igashin is done. He got us all the way through that climb. And now attacking the descent. 5k to go. Gel for Martin Guerrero. Attacking the descent. Full gas now. Berlikov gel. And Igashin get on their wheel so we can break toe when the time comes. How far behind are we? I don't know. <laughs> it's not good though. It's not good positionally. But again, we make up ground. As we pass Bovin. Inside the final kilometer, Martin Guerrero pull up Berlikov. Pogacar, Alaphilippe, Yates, Hayter, Chicone. 700 meters. Shockman. Now finish it off, Berlikov. At least get us into that top 10. Is that Bernal? No, Hagita. Hagita, that'll be ninth. Ouch. Yeah, we missed out. Missed out big time. Berlikov probably could have done more uh, at the time. Thought it split that we experienced. I didn't think that we were as far behind as we were. I thought it was still manageable. I misread the scenario. So that's... A lot of that's on me trying to make up for that, trying to use the team to pull it back. And we did effectively use the team to pull it back and got us back into the top 10. Berlikov was still really strong. He beats Bernal. He beats Carthy. He beats Carapaz. He beats a number of very strong riders. Avenipol, Petters, Bovin. I mean, were guys that we just passed and they ended up well behind us. So where others struggled and if Berlikov was alone, maybe he would have str struggled. He did have two riders with him for a little while anyway. I don't know. Uh, definite what if on that one if we had focused on those two earlier trying to stay up there. But without teammate support around them, they were bound to struggle there towards the end. But you never know. You never know. Uh, you know, the result could have been worse. Could have been better. Could have been the same. Don't know for sure. We end up 9th, 14th, 21st, 35th on this one. Uh, definitely not our best day. World Championship results. The individual time trial winner, Val Van Aert, ahead of a So those two competing at the top. Bissiger, Ghana, only 4th place this year with William Barta in 5th. The World Championships, this was a massive surprise result. Uh, it was also a surprising profile. It was lightly cobbled sprint finish but that lightly cobbled really threw off the results on this one making it feel more like a classic more like a, a northern classic teach Manute comes in fifth Pollitt fourth as green thirds so you kind of get usual suspects of the classics variety there while van art second so he does not do the double but hugo hofstetter israel startup nation 30 years old okay classics rider but definitely not an elite classics rider ends up with the win and it was a small break of about six riders uh, that ended up claiming i saw the results of it but i didn't partake in the race as i control the u.s and you know i i can't take any u.s riders so none of my riders are uh, in that so i just kind of look for the results and hope that one of these years we could have a guy competing at the world championship level though not expected. Berlikov, you never know, could show up under a different profile, could absolutely finish near the top. It would be awesome if he wins the World Championships one day and we get the rainbow bands, uh, and that would be a real testament of what we're doing 
in this series. But anyway, yeah, surprise that Hugo Hofstetter, uh, definitely not elite. If you didn't catch this at the end of the last episode, there is a chance we're off the bubble. Right now we are ranked second among Continental Pro teams. I think there is a 2% chance that we go any lower than where we're at right now, especially looking at the search results of riders that remain unsigned. I think there's 175, 174. No, actually, I think even the 75 is gone. There's a 74 and then a bunch of 73s, and even that list is getting shorter. So availability of riders is down to virtually none. So nobody's going to raise their profile, not to our caliber anyway. So what we have besides any changes there, and like I said, I'll, I'll leave that open because riders do level up and that could change things. And that could also change things in our favor as we still have a decent chance. I don't know, 20%, 15% chance. Uh, I'd say now that it's October, we have maybe a week left. Let's say 10% chance at this point somebody levels up right now my top nine guys totally unchanged for the last two months so since august zero level ups have happened among my top nine we did have isakov level up shortly before and i think that's it so of my top nine burlakov was a little more than shortly before i'd say he was probably june right around national championships time so we've had two out of nine level up in recent months. Everybody else, it's been quite a while since their last level up. So we are due for seven out of nine guys. Uh, I'd say Galvez has the lowest potential of any of those. So he's not necessarily has it coming. Igashin also was somebody who leveled up not too long ago. So maybe he doesn't have one coming. Uh, that still leaves five. Five riders that are due for a level up, I'd say. Could it happen in the next week? It could. Is it going to happen? Probably not. Even on a four, a minus four race day condition, Kyokovci actually riding pretty well here at the Chrono de Nations into the final kilometer and pushing for the finish line. And he sits third overall so far, exactly two minutes behind. I like the Chrono de Nations as it's a long time trial and it's not contained within a stage race it's a standalone event it's a chance for a proper time trialist to actually claim victory proper victory uncontested no you know no weird circumstances just a time trialist going out and getting a win not only on a stage but you know in overall capacity and i like that i do like that that opportunity presents itself here you can see Meta on a plus one race day condition today. That's giving him a 76 time trial. That should allow him to put up a pretty competitive time. And I'm finding the balance. 72 is good when you're not great at time trialing. It looks like a 73 is something you can pull off. You can see where uh, we're coming up on plow right, moving ahead of him. Uh, Luke Shee's also just about to set off though. And so we need to prepare Luke Shee's big negative race day condition. So... Uh, he's not going to do terribly well. I think Meta might be able to start pushing a 74. Uh, and, you know, we might be able to do something along those lines, kind of in a throughout scenario. Kikovji, I was having difficulty early on finding that balance on what is the right amount of energy to kind of burn as you go through. But the 74 for Meta does seem to be about level right now. Lukshi's on his 73 seems to be slightly behind, potentially. Uh, we've got Luco, we've got Gonzalez Albiol, we have Galvez, and then we have Martin Guerrero. I know that's the one behind my screen, but that's Martin Guerrero, uh, who is our leader for this one. We have our one and only final uh, World Tour race happening right now in the Tour of Guangxi. And then the same day that this one is taking place is the Tour of Japan. So that final race in Japan. And Meta! Kato made a into the race lead for now 18 seconds clear. That's a good result. That's a good result. Will it hold? Yeah, probably not. Probably not strong enough to hold, but it may be strong enough to finish in the top 10. Uh, Walshide goes fifth. 
Kiyokovchi already on the road just slipping out of the top 10. He's down to 9th, 219 down. Uh, he, he won't threaten, but still, it's a good time for him. Look, she's though, uh, I think look, she's just really struggling. You can see that 73 not panning out for him as he's got a pretty big deficit right now to overcome. Minus 5 <laughs> race day condition. It does set him up as a 62 time trialist, but he's got 53 resistance. No wonder he is struggling so much right now. That 71 does seem to be making up some ground, though. Luca ready to set off. 76 time trial. Okay, that's good. Sixty-eight resistance, zero on that race day condition. We'll check back in with Luke Shees here. Last climb of the day behind him. There's one more, one more slight uphill. They're a little bit further up the road. Looks like he is struggling yet again. Back off to a seventy. There was that little uphill, like one percent. Two and a half K to go, and he's going to be running into that red bar, running out. And there you go, 43rd, five and a half minutes down. That was poor. That was poor. He just could not push. Okay, Luke Sheese does have a bit of a deficit. 74 is a little too hard. Though 73 seems to be kind of the way to go, unless you are on terrible race day condition. Luco is passing. Jones, but Jones is not a time trialist, so that last proper hill coming up as Gonzalez Albiol just about to set off 75, so we'll, we'll try a 73 for him. Luco, I think we're going to need to back off slightly to get towards the end. That last hill now behind him. Seven K through that last little rise, preparing for the end. Three K to go. I don't know how well he's gonna do here, but with that red bar, how far will it get him? One K attacking third. Twenty-three seconds down. He is on the podium right now, and Meta still leads. By the way. Calva is just a 70. We're not going to be spending much time focusing on him. We'll leave him at 72. It's also be all. We're pushing that a little bit harder. Trying to see because it looks like you could definitely run out of yellow and still get about 1.5k before, or almost even 2k, uh, before that red bar runs out. So a little extra push for Gonzalez Albiol as he comes up on Joyce. Joyce is a pretty good time trialist. But have we gone too hard? He looks to be further in, in, into a uh, deficit than I thought he would be at this point. Yeah, Joyce is decent. 69 time dryless sprinter. Two and a half, almost 3K to go. That's that's really stretching it here. Gonzalez Albiol rounds that final corner. And he will make it. He will make it fourth. 34 seconds. We... We sit in first, third, and fourth place right now. And fifth is over a minute down, and it's a half minute through the top four. We seem to have really found the the balance. What can Martin Guerrero do? Our stronger time trialist. Galvez in his 72 is doing just fine. Let's go ahead and push him to a 73. Martin Guerrero not too long before he sets off. And we will focus on him as Galvez, I don't th think, is going to threaten the higher positions. Minus one race day condition for Martin Guerrero, but he still has a 78 time trial and a 72 resistance. That, fortunately, is unaffected. His downhill, really, the only thing that's going to be impacted. And you only need that right there. Galvez coming up on the finish, 8.7K. I think he actually might even be able to push it out a little bit harder towards the finish. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. We'll give him his finish. He deserves it. Yes, okay, we're doing fine. 4K, 3K, 
Now the red bar is going to start ticking down at 2.4. Final kilometer. Push that a little bit harder to the finish. That was good. 19th, 226. That ended up not being such a poor time. That was okay. You know, Kikovci, Kikovci is still in 18th. Galvez is 20th, so they're both inside the top 25 right now comfortably, and we still sit first, third, and fourth. Martin Guerrero, meanwhile, though, 74 might be just a hair too hard. Let's go 73 for a little bit. And he has been pushing steadily along. Absolutely can contend with Meta. Can we get him above Tamir? I'd like to get him above Tamir. Whether it's first or second, doesn't matter to me. Meta, it's definitely his day. But can Guerrero also make it his day as well? Okay, there's that last little hill. And our 73, I think we might be able to get away with. It's 11k to go. He's definitely got a deficit. Might even need to drop to a 72 here. We are catching up to the rider ahead of us. Oh, Valgren! Ay, 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 Valgren just put in a fantastic time, takes over the lead. Now we need Martin Guerrero to do something more. So now we look at second, fourth, and fifth. 4K to go, and Martin Guerrero's going to start dipping in at 3.1. That's a little early. It's a little early, but he, I think he's going to just make it. Oh, yes, he does. He does. Second! 13 seconds down. Ah, oh, so close. Whoa, just <sighs> uh, and we're down just to the edge of the podium as the best guys, the last couple riders behind us, are putting in really solid times. Bloom Levy, 84 time trial. Bumps us completely off the podium. We get fourth. We get fifth. We get eighth. And we get ninth. That's really good. You, you get a trio of amazing time trialists who all come in ahead of us. Our best time trialist ended up on a negative race day condition, still put in a really solid time. As a team, we were the best by minutes. So as a team, we did well, but we just couldn't quite... We, we got one guy who's not a great, great time trialist who ended up with really good race day condition, put in an outstanding result uh, to get fifth. If Mark Guerrero had that, he would have been probably second. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No no doubt about it. Right? Meta had, what, plus four? Martin Guerrero, if he would have had a plus three, plus two, that would have been enough. He would have gotten 20 seconds more. That would have been the difference. You know, you add one to the time trial. You add a couple points to resistance, a few points to resistance, and make him that much, you know, last that much longer, push that a little bit harder, go that little bit faster easily half a minute full minute though probably not bloom levy in that 84 yeah you're not making up that ground still four guys in the top 10 including two in the top five is a really good result on that one i'll take it and it's the japan cycling cup this is one of those challenging races that things can go awry pretty quick and it's usually pretty competitive but it's happening the same day as the Chrono Donations. It's happening at the same time as the Tour de Guan uh, Guangxi. And the combination of all of that leads to, well, not the There's best field that you're going to see. So I right now have some guys that are drifting back here. And for me, three races going on at once means I have, well, a C team here trying to, to get some sort of result out of this one. Uh, it's coming back together for the moment, but I definitely have some guys that are going backwards uh, or struggling at the back, trying to uh, make up some ground, and we're going to have to push even harder for them uh, to get them back into contention for this race. Otherwise, they are going to be out. Razanaukis, uh, Rivera, they are kind of at the end of their rope. Jakob has already been dropped. And set them to auto as they're out of here. And then Mullabron, let's lead 
Yeah, lead Yurcevich. Lead Yurcevich back in there. And when we hit that next climb, they're going to try to make up that ground and get back into the peloton. Uh, get these two back up there. And then we'll focus on that because that's only going to leave us four riders to contend with and not necessarily strong riders. Kovalevsky and Mogisha. Uh, Mogisha are not that strong at all. So uh, Yurcevich is actually probably our best bet that he's just not a good climber. And there's the first phase, and we've definitely moved up, and we're in a decent position. Phase two is coming up here in a little bit, and that's where we're going to want to push and use uh, Puncher's Mentality as we try to make up ground on these front guys and come back the towards our other two as we have shots. covered that ground. And Mullabron, keep going, keep going. There we go. Back into this group. That's good. Mullerbron's going to be out of energy, and he is in the perfect position. Okay, Yurcevich, punchiest. Kovalevsky, just a better climber. Megisha might be our best bet on the day, though, based on conditions. So uh, let's do this. Mullerbron, keep working. Keep working. Bring it forward. That's 21 chasing. 35 and maybe we take position here don't follow Mullabron but follow these guys and then wait for the next hill and make another push okay Mullabron meanwhile can you try to grab onto the back this is hard with a C team to try to make something happen it's 21 chasing 39 which means we're already well behind and the gap is growing at the moment, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's not a good thing. It's not much push from these three riders, four riders riding at the front. But we don't have the flat rating or the bodies to uh, to make much happen at the moment. It's got to happen on the climb. We've only lost 15 seconds from where we were, so it's not that bad, but... That gap definitely opened some. Okay, here we go. Climbing. Climbing. Uh, punchiness is Yurcevich's thing, so he's got to go punchy. Okay, get over the top and then back off a bit for the downhill. And wait till we begin climbing again and then push. Okay, can we make up that gap? We are making up the gap at least to this group. Kovalevsky is a pure climber, so let's just go 85 for him. Less tempo, that brings us forward into the next group on the road, but this is still nowhere near the front group. The Peloton of 39 has disintegrated, and we've picked up a good chunk of them. Kovalevsky is good on the downhill, okay-ish anyway. Uh, we're going to bury him to try to give Magisha a chance on that next climb to do something. Okay, follow Galvin. Galvin pushing, that's good. Oh, oh, lost Galvin. That didn't work. Catch up to a couple more riders. There's another small group there. And again, we definitely have the bulk of of the chase. But you can see Kovalev Sky is done. Save that last little bit for Magisha. And set him up for the climb to come. That's where we need to make a move. Gisha, start easing forward. Okay, again, you're a climber and not necessarily a puncher. So, make your way forward. Left. There is the peloton now, at least in sight on here. It was 12 riders, but they just split. Magisha now makes his way through another group of, of riders and left them behind. That's good. That is very good. 
Okay, on to his climb. Climb his pace. 77 Mountain, totally solo. That's good. Okay, I think he's made his way into the top 10, but 10k to go is still quite a bit of ground to cover. He's opened up a 30 second gap, 40 second gap, 45 second gap on that chase group through that climb, and he's saved a little bit for what is to come, which is trying to secure a top 10 position at this point. Considering how this day started, this is looking a lot better than what it would have been. Oh no, that is back together. I thought those guys dropped. I thought we were looking at a top 10. We're not. We're looking at 14th with 5k to go. Big gap behind. I mean, we, we've left lots of riders. We, we really worked our way up. And we do have a chance at catching these guys with 4k to go, but not a big chance. There you go, Magisha. It's only 3% for fractions of seconds. And we're definitely coming back at power. Yamamoto. Oh, Yamamoto is being po lapped. Power is the one we were trying to catch, and we're not going to catch him. It's going to be 14th, 15th. 15th place. Padoon second, Hamilton third, Malecki takes the win, uh -oh, and we one. get into 15th. Still not that bad. Not Will Power, Robert Power. Will Power is an Indy car racer. Uh, yeah, that, that could have been way worse, and I don't actually think that would have been much better. Like if I had dropped that chase group and just focused on my two guys at the front and tried to stay alive, I don't think they would have stayed alive. I don't think their climbing capabilities, Kovalev Sky for one thing would have been dropped way sooner than he ended up being to get 38th. Uh, and then Magisha would have been alone. And with 69 resistance, 68 stamina, solo, I just, I don't think he would have hung in there terribly well without help. Now, of course, he did just do, what, 20k solo at the end of that? But I just don't think he would have done 70k solo very well, even if he was in a group uh, and tried to hang on to that group. I, I do think he would have been dropped and ended up in maybe that last group that we left behind. He probably would have ended up there. Do I know that for sure? No. No, I, I don't know that for sure. But let's go ahead and wrap up the season. That's it for the racing. Let's see what the results are. Do we get anybody to level up? There's only a few days left. It hasn't happened yet, so it's probably not. And I think we are literally now on our final day. If we don't see a level up overnight, that's it. We're done. As none of those top nine have leveled up. And there you go. Closing of the transfer market. We go into off-season mode now. Nobody leveled up, so that's going to be it. Biggest moves. Adam Yates. Ineos, Drizners, Groupama FTJ, Vanderpool to Israel Startup Nation, Moss to Hagens Berman, Merlier to DSM, Simon Yates to Adria Mobile, Caruso going to Ineos, Del Rue to Groupama FTJ, Zolo to Bike Exchange, and Shockman to Ineos. Ineos poaching a lot of really good riders. Uh, the biggest move, though, is Wild Fan Art. Well, and looky, looky, something has happened. We have not leveled up. We have not changed, but we are now 20th. So somebody has had a, a little re-evaluation of where they are, and we are literally the highest-ranked Continental Pro team now, Quebeca Esos, who we were neck and neck with, and it's us. We have improved our ranking. So one of those three guys leveled up without seeing a change uh unless wait wait for it wait for it karaman has leveled up literally on the final day or maybe it was yesterday i i didn't see it there yesterday so literally the final day karaman has leveled up but it wasn't enough <laughs> so we are now at 81 and 276s still a 77 point index but the 21 year old has leveled up on literally the last day but he bumped us from 21st to 20th not gonna be enough but a 77 mountain 76 time trial 
uh, 70 resistance, but I mean, come on, he's 21. Recovery at 73, he's going to be scary good. 75 on the hills, so he's going to be Berlikov, but like Martin Guerrero, where he could actually time trial, 21 years of age, I mean, it's going to be scary, scary good. Uh, but my oh my, did we come close to making World Tour as the highest rated Continental Pro team? We have to be destined for numerous, numerous uh, World Tour races next season. So that's going to be a big step. It's not going to be full on World Tour. Uh, you figure we're going to dom dominate Continental Pro. Speaking of the individual rankings, Pogacar, Van Aert, Adam Yates with Bora this year, Bernal with Bora. And Alaphilippe, that's your top five in terms of World Tour rankings. Continental rankings, it is Alexei Berlikov who wins that one ahead of Vermeulen. Garcia Cortina is third. Martin Guerrero just off the podium in fourth place of the rankings. In Super Prestige, Berlikov up in 14th. As a team, the World Tour rankings dominated by the World Tour teams. Idios comfortably on top this year ahead of UAE, Bora, and Dukenic. We beat we were the only continental team to beat any World Tour teams in the rankings. We beat Kofidis. Kofidis gets 20th overall, way down at the bottom, and then we come in just ahead of them, just behind Lotto Sudal, just behind Bahrain Victorious, and we barely even sniffed World Tour this season. We had a very very select few World Tour races, most notably, and where almost all of these points came from was the Tour de Swiss, which we won. But yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. Alpes and Fenix, the only other one to even score a thousand World Tour points outside of the World Tour rankings. So all of those teams that did get the invites did not fare well. Continental, we got it back. We were second there for a little bit, Del Hayes. Uh, had eclipsed us, the two of us, way ahead of everybody else, Turkish Airlines, Alps and FedEx, uh, Rally Cycling, and Quebec ASOS, the only ones to really score terribly well. Uh, not a massive drop-off to that next tier, though. A lot of teams performing okay. I mean, all the way down to Hoggins Berman, still over 1,500. But we do reclaim the top spot. And that was as one of the last Continental Pro teams. As the top Continental Pro team for next season, you figure we're going to be much stronger. Now, of course, the team for next year is mostly the same guys that we have right now coming back, plus a handful of riders. Uh, and those handful of riders will ultimately make us a little stronger, but not terribly different from what we have right now. But what we had at the start of the season versus what we have right now is where we've had that major change. And you figure we're only going to get stronger as the season goes on. This is the big one for me, though. It's super prestige. Enios, UAE, Bora, Dukenic, same, same usual suspects on top. But we come in all the way up in 10th place with 4,400 points. That, that's the testament of where we're at. Because Del Hayes, you can see that they're also looking pretty dang good. But then, you know, the top 18, outside of the two of us, is all World Tour teams. And we cracked the top 10 this year as the smallest Continental Pro team, or one of the smallest Continental Pro teams. As the biggest one, you figure we're going to move up a little bit next season, especially if we get more World Tour races. Look at it this scale, score-wise, I think we'd be up in the Group Ama FTJ range next year maybe even the Jumbo Visma kind of range. I don't think we're going to necessarily compete with the best squads, especially if we only get one World Tour, uh, Grand Tour race. If we get two or even all three, watch out. We'll be up there with the best. In terms of wins, 39 victories claimed this season. Berlikov getting a lot of those, but certainly not all. 12 for Berlikov, so you know he had roughly a third. Martin Guerrero had five himself, so that was 17 among the team. And then a lot of guys, lots of guys on the team, and a lot of those wins, remember, uh, could be chalked up to the national championships, which we have an unfair advantage on. So I think realistically, 
we're looking at more of about 20 wins this season, which bumps us down a little bit, but still looks pretty good for uh, what kind of team we are right now. Climbing, that's about it. Everything else, yeah, falls off a bit. So still, really, really good season. First year Continental Pro. One more year Continental Pro. Can we re-sign Berlikov and Martin Guerrero next season? Can we re-sign one or both? Big question, big if. Will absolutely impact whether we make World Tour the following year. 81 and 276s. And then we are loaded with a couple 75s, 74s, and a whole bunch of 73s, including new ones coming into the team. You figure we can have a load of 76s next season. No problem. But who will emerge beyond that mark? Who will be a 77 or a 78? And then if we re-sign Berlikov and he's still an 81, then you think, okay, really good chance of making World Tour. We've got to hang on to Berlikov, though, for that to happen. I think if we lose Berlikov and we have a 78 and a 77 and a 76, then we're kind of right in the same boat we're in right now, which is uh, treading water, <laughs> but not necessarily making progress. We've climbed right to the top of Continental Pro. It's definitely progress, but uh, just, just missing World Tour kind of hurts. Anyway, that's going to do it for this season. We're going to have a little bit smaller team next year. We're, we're dropping in size by seven riders, and we are getting rid of a lot of this junk down here at the bottom. That's going to be nice. The, most of the riders that we're losing are right here in this bottom group. Look at those expiring contracts. Uh, one last time, goodbye to Ravenko, Gusinyav, Grego, Marenzi, uh, Aribe. Farewell to him. He will be missed. Debesse, uh, though he hasn't ridden for us really at all this last year. Uh, Faitosa, Molebron, Galvez renewed. Araroya, that's one we'll miss. And Mugisha, so two decent riders. Uh, Faitosa, who made some decent progress. He was one of our lowest guys. But, you know, what else? These guys didn't progress at all. So uh, one important thing here, looking at the contracts that expire next year Igishin also on that list Roman also on that list so we are going to be missing some key players I think Rivera will not get renewed uh, as he's pretty much already leveled up Pluto's probably not going to get renewed at 26 uh, Jakob's certainly not going to get renewed when he has not progressed well Arnautovic I think was a 70 just leveled up to a 71 so he might have a little more sprint capability than what he had uh Roman depends on whether he resigns for cheap, but we could definitely sacrifice him for uh, for a little bit of money. But what kind of money do we have expiring? A lot of three thousands, three thousand eight hundreds. So they're pretty much all under four k. So we don't have a ton of money coming off the books to to feed Berlikov's hungry, hungry wallet for next season. He's going to go from twenty five hundred to I'm guessing eighty thousand. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.